Hello class, we're going to be looking at uh, quadratic inequalities in this lesson. We're going to graph quadratic inequalities and we're also going to solve quadratic inequalities. So what's an inequality? An inequality is um, you know, an, e uh, an expression that doesn't have an equal sign. It has a greater than, less than, greater or equal, less than or equal sign. Now when we graph things, we're, we're creating a diagram which illustrates all the different points that satisfies an equation or an inequality. So if we have a, a linear equation, this line is saying every single point on this line, if we were to plug it into this equation, it would be true. So if we have now an inequality, um, we graph it where we would shade this entire side here, and what this means is that every single point where it's darker or shaded, including this line, if we plug this xy into this, it satisfies it. If we plug this xy into this, it would satisfy it. Um, we shade as a way to graphically represent the entire sea of points that satisfy this inequality. Okay, so how do we deal with, uh, instead of linear inequalities, how do we deal with, you know, quadratic inequalities, or just, for that matter, f of x? So if we have a function, f of x, um, start, we start by graphing the function itself, but uh, we use a solid line if we have a greater than or equal or less than or equal because um, the solid line represents the fact that points on that line will still satisfy this equation, which makes sense. Y is equal to f of x. Anything on this kind of graph curve here um, on, on f of x will so, you know satisfy this equation. But we use a dashed line um, when it's strictly greater than or less than because um, points that were actually on this curve here will not satisfy this because we don't have an equal sign. So then after we've graphed out f of x, we can take any point on either side of the curve and use it as a test point. Um, we then test that point, we plug it into the inequality, and if this point, you know, if this um, expression is true after plugging in the test point, that means that this point is part of the solution space, and so in fact everything on that same side of that test point would be part of the solution space, so we shade everything there. If we found that 0, negative 4 did not satisfy this, then this would not be a solution, and instead we would shade everything on top. Now, a shortcut, and it's a legitimate shortcut, is just to remember this. If you have y is greater than f of x, or greater than or equal or greater, you take and shade everything above the f of x function. And if it's less than or equal or less than, you shade beneath the function. Okay, that's a shortcut. I don't I want to emphasize this idea of a test point being kind of a foolproof way because you know maybe we'll have maybe we had something like this x squared plus y squared is less than one. And in this case that's actually a circle right here. So, you know, according to this rule, do we shade down? No, we don't shade down. Um, it's more like, do we shade inside or outside? And so, you know, the idea of taking a test point, you know, take 0, 0, plug it in, and if it's true, you shade. If I plug in 0, 0, I get, I get 0 plus 0 is 0, which is less than 1, so my test point of 0, 0 is true, so I shade everything inside. So that's why this test point idea to me is more fundamental. It's more of a, a concept that can be used 
everywhere, whereas this shading up, shading down, um, less powerful and 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 you could forget it easily or you can actually, you know, mistakenly do it backwards, you know. Okay, so anyways, um, let's do a few problems. Um, we have a parabola. This is in vertex form. Um, our vertex is at negative 2, comma, negative 5. Oops, let me fix that up. Negative 5. Um, we have an A value of 3, so we have a stretch, a vertical stretch here of 3. So I'm going to go across by 1 and up by 3. That's my A value of 3. And I'm going to reflect this point across and draw a parabola. Now, because we have a less than, we don't have a less than equal, I'm going to use a dashed line. And because it's less than, we shade everything below. Now, um, notice this. We could also have taken a test point, 0, 0. And let's kind of just do a thought experiment here. Um, zero, let's plug 0 in here. So 3 times 2 squared. So um, 3 times uh, f um, 4 is 12. Um, 12 minus 5 is 7. Is 7 greater than 0 when we plug in 0, 0. Yes, 7 is greater than 0, so 0, 0 is a solution point. And so yes, everything on this side of the parabola is a solution to this expression here. Okay, let's try another one. In this case, we have another parabola uh, in vertex form. We have uh, the vertex at negative 1, 3. Um, we have a vertical stretch factor of negative 2, so we can graph that by going across by 1 and down by negative 2, because our a is negative 2. And in this case, um, again, we could use um, this test case, uh, uh, a test point right in here, 0, 0. If we were to plug that in here, we get uh, negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, plus 3, that's going to give us 1. Is 0 greater than 1? No, it's not. So this test point 0, 0 is not a solution. So it must be everything on this side, which is consistent. When we have y is greater than a function, we shade above the graph. So it would be everything there. Okay, now let's talk about systems. Instead of a single equation, now we're talking about multiple equations. In this case here, we have two uh, parabolas, two inequalities, and we're going to shade the, the solution to a system. The x and y's that satisfy both will be the intersection of both of the shaded regions. So the first equation is this solution here, shaded in blue. The second solution is this um, uh, shaded region in purple. Now the intersection is going to be this part right in here. This darker region is our solution. Um, these points up here, even though it's shaded, are not part of our actual solution. I just illustrated the shading of it in order to show kind of the steps where we can see the intersection of the shaded regions. Now, um, if you're using pencil, you might not be able to color it as nicely. You might do something like this, where you do some sort of cross hashing or something like this, cross hatching. And then right inside, maybe really emphasize the fact that inside here, those are our solution points right in there. Okay. Um, now let's actually look at single uh, variable inequalities. Um, instead of an x and a y, we're going to be graphing this on a number line. Um, we deal with this by finding the solutions by just setting it equal to zero. Um, we could factor this. Um, x minus 5, x plus 2, when is this less than 0? 
Well, first off, we're going to plot um, 5 and negative 2 on our number line. And we're going to use an open circle, an open dot, uh, because we have a greater or less than sign here. Um, now, we either need to shade the inside of this region, or we want to shade both of the outs outer pieces. And, and again, the basic idea is choose a test point. Um, let's choose x is equal to 0, because it's a very nice, easy point to use. And let's see what happens. Is, is it true? So we plug in 0 into this equation, and we get 0 minus 0 minus 10, which is negative 10. Is that less than 0? You know, we have the 0 here. So this is true. Negative 10 is less than 0. So 0, x is equal to 0, is a solution. So everything on the inside here, between those two open dots, are a solution as well. Uh, let's do one more. Um, now, in this case, uh, we need to do a bit of work before we do any factoring or we try to solve it. We want to bring the 3 to the other side. And now we can go ahead and attempt to factor it. And in this case, it is uh, quite factorable. And we have two solutions. We have a solution at 1 and negative 3. And in this case, we're going to be using solid dots because we have a greater than or equal. Because of the equal sign here, we can actually use the solid dots. Now again, is do we shade on the inside or do we shade on either of these sides here? Let's use a good test point of 0 again. So when we plug in 0, we're asked the question is 0 greater than 3. No, it's not. So 0, x is equal to 0, is not a solution to this expression. So we don't want to shade on the inside. Instead, we're going to shade on the outside. And this is our solution. Now, with parabolas, it's going to be the case where it's either inside or outside of these two dots. But, um, you know, a safer way is just to test each region. That would be very foolproof. Um, you might want to do that as a way of checking your work anyways. Now, lastly, I want to kind of give a different perspective of this same inequality. This is the same one, you know, uh, x squared plus 2x is greater than 3. Same thing here, x squared plus 2x is greater than 3. But I want to show a different way of illustrating it. So I'm going to take my left-hand side, and I'm going to graph this. Um, so this here, the red, you can see the red parabola here is this equation. The right-hand side, oops, sorry, the right-hand side right here is um, at y is equal to 3, so I'm just going to graph that out here. And so the point of inner, or, or the places where, um, actually let me highlight this first, where the the, um, this function here, where the red function is greater than the blue function, those are solution places. So these are, uh, this area right up here, where the function is, this is uh, where the, the red function is greater than the blue function, and then these x values down here are the x values such that the red function is greater than the blue function. So it's almost like the shadow of this and this down upon the x-axis. These are the solution points to this uh, equation here. And this is exactly like the previous page um, right here. Same exact number line as this right here. So it's a good thing to try to understand this illustration, um, this graphical representation of this inequality. Okay, that's the lesson for today. Have a good day.